Hi everyone, this is Jim. This, welcome to this uh, post-mortem of my Blitz game number uh, 299. I was uh, white here. Played uh, d4 and my opponent played e6, which is uh, unusual, but uh, a very flexible move. There's um, two main replies to it, uh, e4 or c4. Now e4 allows uh, black to switch into the French defense with the move uh, d5. Um, and uh, but my opponent, well, I played c4. I don't know if he intended to play the French defense. I didn't get to uh, test that out. I played c4, um, setting up a queen's gambit decline type of structure here, which he could transpose into with um, d5. Or he could play knight f6 going into a uh, Nimzo Indian. But he chose to go into the queen's Indian with b6. Bit of an unusual choice here. And... Uh, Interesting. This uh, whole line here is, is very tricky because of the uh, pressure on this diagonal. And one way you can avoid it, if you want to uh, <coughs> just not have much trouble here, is you can actually play uh, e3 in this position. Um, it's not, you know, a book move, but um, it's, it's a solid choice because after he develops his bishop here, you can put your knight on uh, f6. And then... Uh, the pressure is somewhat blunted. The, the bishop is defended by the queen. He doesn't want to trade off that good bishop for that knight anyway. And uh, you can later develop your bishop to e7 and castle and, and be relatively safe here. You just have to keep your eye on that uh, on that bishop. And you see after those moves we've actually transposed into a known position of knight f6. Um, but the uh, way I chose to play it, you know, I don't know what this a3 move is about, honestly. <laughs> That seems pretty premature. Uh, it doesn't show up in the computer scan. Anyway, I chose to play more directly with e4. It was basically just uh, directly trying to combat the, the bishop b7 idea. You know the bishop is coming here and you're just putting a pawn up there immediately to slow it down. And now the uh, top choice here is bishop d3. And I think that's what I usually play. Although I think, uh, well, knight c3 is a playable move as well. So both of those. But you need to support this pawn. And the same tactics apply after knight c3. Um, he could immediately lash out with uh, f5. He didn't play it here. And, um, oh, oh, right, right. In this position, because of the, the bishop still defending the pawn, he, he can't play that. Now that's the difference. If I had played bishop d3 immediately, let's take a look at this line. Um, now he can play f5, and that's one of the ideas here. Um, and can he... <laughs> okay, and then we can get into a crazy tactical line, um, which you see the evaluation changing back and forth. Uh, it's dangerous to take here, though. Takes... You <laughs> see, the, uh, the engine keeps changing its mind as it looks deeper and deeper. It takes. It looks like you're losing a rook, but you have this check here. Um, anyway, so this is a crazy tactical line. And uh, the engine can't make up its mind who's better. <laughs> and uh, I don't know who's better either. I think uh, probably, unless you want to become an expert in uh, those kind of crazy tactics, it's better to avoid that and just defend the pawn on e5. So uh, uh, f5 there. Uh, knight c3 could be played. And then we transpose into the game. Okay, so I went knight c3 first. And um, he played bishop b4 pinning the knight and, um, you know, sort of encouraging me to develop my bishop. Although uh, the engine says I could have tried queen c2 here, um, defending the pawn that way and um, keeping the g pawn defended so as to discourage the move uh, f5. Um, but I played bishop to d3 here. Also a reasonable choice. And now he plays f5. And now this tactic is operating. So it's not safe for me to take on uh, f5 at this point. I have to do something else, and the recommended move here is uh, f3. Also, well, let's back up. f3 was a move, uh, it was actually the top choice here instead of bishop d3. That's what I, I meant to say as well. I'm always reluctant to play f3. Um, you gotta got to know your openings uh, <laughs> to know when it's safe to play it. But here, for example, if black uh, tries the queen h5 check, I mean, that's the downside of f3 is you're always you're opening up this diagonal. Uh, but his bishop is over here, so he can't pile up on the diagonal so easily. And his knight is not yet developed to a square where it can sack on g3. So um, just pawn to g3 chases the queen away. He can trade 
on c3 first, but eventually his queen is going to have to move. And uh, and the pawn on um, e4 is defended, so there's no trick like a check and take rook in the corner. So g f3 and g3 would be okay in this circumstance. So by playing bishop d3, it, it's not the best choice here. Um, and allows, uh, well, still an okay position. Um, maybe I should try f3 at this point, but it's... Uh, I went with queen e2, defending the pawn, and, uh, well, let's let it settle down. It thinks uh, knight f6 is uh, is good for black here. Let's see what this is about. Well, knight f6 was played, and now f3 could be played, but I played bishop g5. I guess, yeah, I've gone down a line here where I'm forced to give up the bishop pair. So if we back up, let's see if we can pinpoint my mistake right here. I guess here is, this is my last chance to play f3 or d5 or something else. d5 is interesting. Yeah, yeah, d5 makes sense. You're shutting down the bishop, so it's not going to have the chance to take here on, on g2. But I think my best shot would have been f3 in that earlier position. Okay, but after queen e2, then knight f6, I, I've gotten to a position where black is a little bit better. And uh, continues this way. After the h... oh... Um, Okay, so the chess engine likes castles, and the book move is just taking on e4, and my opponent played um, h6, so we're out of the book here. And uh, this forces me to trade, otherwise I'm just losing the e-pawn, which is an important pawn, I can't just give that up. So I took, and he took back with the queen, and uh, it's about an even position, so, so that was okay. Forcing the exchange was not black's best way to play that. And I was actually starting to feel pretty comfortable here. Now I get to develop my knight. Um, both sides can castle. I threw in this uh, e takes f5 here um, because I wanted to take at a point in time when uh, when he needs to take back with a pawn, and that keeps the f file shut. It looks like he could have thrown in the move bishop takes f3 here. I really didn't think about this. and knight c6. So that's interesting, just not even taking the pawn back, at least not right away. And then I'll castle. Oh, he's got to take that pawn back at some point. Ah, but he's hitting He's hitting d4. That's interesting. So castling there could not, uh, it doesn't seem like it's the right move. How do I defend d4? Oh, oh, d4 is hard to defend because the queen and the knight are coordinating to attack it. Okay, very interesting. So in this position, um, that's the point of bishop takes f3 and why it's a good move. Bishop takes f3, it's with tempo because it hits my queen and it uh, removes the defender of the e-pawn. So, uh, so that's, how, that's how black could have gotten the advantage here. Instead he took the other knight and that uh, brings a pawn towards the center and it also brings a pawn in to defend um, d4. <clears throat> so it helps me in two ways, <laughs> and uh, I guess that's really one way. It's just shoring up the center there, and so now the the idea of taking on f3 doesn't doesn't help. And he, he has nothing better than to take the pawn back, and I get to castle. So all all is fine here. It's just a normal opening advantage. Uh, he just didn't uh, didn't get the most out of his position. He had chances there. So the game continues. Knight c6, rook e1, normal developing moves, and he chases my queen a bit. Oh. Yeah, I think that was a mistake. He didn't have to play rook a1. The engine didn't, um, likes knight a5 here, letting it settle down. Yeah, that's a typical idea. This is kind of a Nimzo-Indian type of pawn structure after this exchange. And um, and the c-pawn is weak, and it's a common idea to play uh, knight a5 and bishop a6 to win that pawn. And uh, white usually gets some compensation. In this case, I could actually play knight to... Uh, e5 here to defend it, although you could chase it away with d6. So anyway, that would be a, a, a way for black to equalize. So rook a to e1 is, is a mistake. I can just uh, take that, and um, two rooks for a queen. It's usually better for the rooks, although it always depends on the exact situation. Uh, it can be tricky sometimes if the queen has a lot of uh, forks and stuff. Um, but if the rooks are well coordinated and defending each other, like here, king of seven and rook to e1. Now, the rooks are uh, in touch with each other and coordinating nicely on the e-file. 
So it's not just having the rip pair, it's having this sort of domination of the E file gives me a significant advantage here. So he tries King G6, and already uh, Knight E5 was a winning move. So King G6 is, is a mistake. Uh, what's the idea here? Knight D8 or G6. Okay, he just has to sort of cautiously unwind from this position. So King G6, I guess he's heading for uh, H7, trying to get out of dodge. But uh, if you move the pawn to G6, then you can walk over via G7. And uh, I don't know. I, it leaves him somewhat exposed. But, um, <clears throat> well, on the other hand, this square is covered. So his knight is covering... Um, his knight is covering the e7 square, so I'm not really going to chase that king away anytime soon. Hard to say. His queen's covering it too, so even after knight d8, I can't, I can't put a rook on uh, e7 there. So this uh, king g6 move makes my life a little easier. He's moving his king away from the center, which is often good, but in this case it was like helping to control some key squares here. Um, so I continue on with d5, which the engine likes. And now the knight goes to a5. And I'm holding on to these pawns. Once again, knight e5 check is a good move. But I took the uh, rook and moved it to um, e5. Cancel that. I took this rook and moved it to e5. Okay, I didn't want to allow my back rank here to get uh, too empty. <laughs> there are still dangers. Uh, if my rook were to leave the back rank, his queen could suddenly show up here, perhaps, and uh, cause trouble. So the rook on e5 uh, blocks the view of the queen onto this square and also puts pressure on the uh, pawn on f5. And so now, um, let's see, yeah, basically um, uh, white is just winning, so there's no good move here. Bishop a6 going after this other pawn, and then I would just take on f5. Um, but he moved his king instead, and so I continued with uh, bishop takes f5, and he moved his king here, and now rook e8 check I could follow up with. Instead I played uh, bishop takes d7. I didn't really see the follow up after rook e8, but that, that clearly was not the best move. Still winning though. So now he gets uh, to get his uh, knight into the action. But um, And he's hitting my rook, but I can play um, bishop e6 check. And the king went to h8, best move. And now I went rook f5 hitting the queen. And now he, he just made a terrible mistake here. He played queen e5. He probably, probably a mouse slip. He probably touched his queen and intending to move it here and let go of it when it was on this square. But if he had moved to d8, which was the logical place to move, um, rook f7 looks pretty good here. I mean, the, my rooks are just dominating his, uh, his queen and his pieces are just out of play here. He can't really grab this uh, pawn, can he? If he tries to take... And just rook d7, yeah, forking the queen. Okay, so, and the bishop, so I get the piece. So what can he play? Knight d6? Okay, that's a logical move. Um, bringing the knight closer to the king side and kicking my rook. And uh, rook to d7. Bring to f8. And rook takes c7. So I guess I can just continue mopping up, maybe eventually get my other rook to the uh, uh, <coughs> seventh rank. Also, bringing my knight in, knight to e5, and rook to d7 are ideas. So, um, it's just a dominating position for white, and white is material up. So, I was winning anyway, but his last move was queen e5, probably a mouse slip, and uh, then he resigned after that. So, that's how it ended. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought uh, that is kind of an interesting opening, and uh, maybe one of these days I'll go into that uh, really tricky line where, uh, where uh, uh, white... White allows black to take on g2 in order to get the check on the king. It's a very dynamic line. And actually, that line goes back to uh, the 16th century. It was written about in a book <laughs> that long ago. So that's really a, a very old opening line. I was going to uh, do a uh, video on it uh, called The Oldest Trick in the Book. Maybe I'll do that sometimes. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. I will um, see you again soon. Bye.